Hi, I'm Jeff Sankstack. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about keyboard shortcuts you can use to display layer transform properties. I have two image files here as assets. I'm going to create a new comp by clicking on the new comp icon here. I'll use a standard comp preset of HDTV, and we'll set it to 10 seconds and click OK. I'm going to add one of these image files to it. This image file here is very tall. It's taller than the comp. I'll drag it down to this comp here like that. And I need to change the size of this so that it fits inside the comp. You can access the context menu by right-clicking on the image there, but you can also right-click on the layer here as well. And then go to Transform and Fit to Comp Height because it's a vertical format image. All right, I'll add the second one. This is a horizontal or landscape format image. I'll drag it down here like that. And it's going to be much too wide. I'll right-click on it here inside the Comp panel and go Transform and Fit to Comp Width. So we have two images there. This one's covering up part of the one below it. If I turn that off for the moment, you'll see that the one below it has my daughter inside this redwood tree, which is just on the road from us here at the Armstrong Redwoods State Park. All right, let's just take a look at this top one here. I'll turn that back on and turn off the bottom layer. Every layer except audio layers has transform properties. To see them, you just make the layer active and open up the disclosure triangle, and there's the transform property group, and open it up, and there are five transform properties. You can read them all off their anchor point, position, scale, rotation, and opacity. You can access these one at a time instead of having to go through this process of opening up Transform and seeing all five of them. And it's usually more convenient to access them based upon their name rather than see all five of them at once when all you want to do is just work on the scale, for example. So I'm going to close this down, like so. And I'm going to show you the five keyboard shortcuts. They're all inside the PDF that I provided with the course. Those five shortcuts are really intuitive. Anchor points A, positions P, scale is S, rotation is R. The only one that's not immediately intuitive is opacity, but if you think of opacity as opacity, then you can see that the keyboard shortcut T works out just fine for opacity. All right, back here in After Effects to make this work, I need to make the timeline active. So I click on that and you see the blue border around it. So now that this is active, when I press the S key, for example, scale shows up. And I can adjust the scale here like that. If I want to switch to position, I press the P key. That replaces scale with position. I can drag it left or right, up and down, what have you. If I want to shift to rotation, I press the R key. That replaces position with rotation. I can rotate it, like so. If I want to change the opacity, I press the T key. There's opacity. We can reduce the opacity, like that. And finally, to get to the anchor point, that's letter A. And changing the anchor point is not necessarily intuitive because the anchor point stays put while the image moves around, which is kind of a little bit off-putting if you're not ready for that. The easier way to move the anchor point around is to click on the Pan Behind tool up here. I'm going to talk about keyboard shortcuts for the tools in a separate lesson, but I'll click on that and you can move the anchor point around. And just to help you understand what the anchor point does, it's the point about which a layer will scale or rotate. So if I take it up to the corner like that, for example, and go on down here and press on S for scale, it'll scale from that point, like so. If I change the rotation by pressing the R key, it'll rotate around that point. And it doesn't have to be in the clip. It can be outside the borders. So I've got the pan behind tool still selected here. You can tell it's selected by that sort of square icon there. I can drag it outside the image like that. When I rotate it now, it's going to rotate around that point, like so. All right, so those are the various single key keyboard shortcuts to access single properties. But if you want to work with multiple properties, you can view more than one. And the way to do that is to hold down the Shift key when you want to add something else. So right now we see rotation here, but I want to see scale too. So I press Shift S, and that shows us scale and rotation. If I want to get rid of rotation, if I press R, it gets rid of everything. So that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to go back to R, Shift S, Shift P. If I want to get rid of only rotation, I press Shift R. That gets rid of rotation but keeps the other two properties visible. You can also work on properties in multiple layers at the same time. So I'm going to have those two guys go away by pressing the P key, and it makes both of them go away. I'll select both layers by marquee selecting them. I'll turn them both on so you can see them. And now I'm going to press the R key for rotation, and they both show up at the same time. And since they're both active, if I move the rotation here, it rotates both of them. And if I want to add scale, I hold down Shift S and add scale for both. I can adjust the scale of both of them at the same time as well, like so. If I want those properties to go away now, I can press either S or R, and they'll all go away. Or if I press, let's say, P for position, or A for anchor point, or T for opacity, that'll replace these guys. So I'll press T for opacity, 
that gets rid of those two sets of properties and just displays opacity there. And I can change opacity on both of those things at once. So that's how you use keyboard shortcuts to display transform properties in the timeline.